and welcome to our service here at Epiphany. Um, we have a timing issue, and so we have one announcement that's going to happen at the beginning. Uh, hello, everyone. So my name is Kevin Rika, and I am holding a coat drive for my school. This is just a reminder that it will be ending on next Sunday, November 15th. I, if you email me, I can come collect coats at your house, or there is a link on a web to the website uh, at the parish in the parish announcements, so you can donate through that. And thank you for all of those who have already donated to the coat drive. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And then start on our service leaflet. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. May God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous, godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. first reading. In the first year of King Belshazzar of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and vision of his head as he lay in bed. Then he wrote down the dream. I, Daniel, saw in my vision by night the four winds of heaven, stirring up the great sea, and four great beasts came up out of the sea, different from one another. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was troubled within me. The visions of my head terrified me. I approached one of the attendants to ask him the truth concerning all this. He, so he said that he would disclose to me the interpretation of the matter. As for these four great beasts, four kings shall ri arise out of the earth, but the holy ones of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever and ever. And now let us recite together Psalm 149. Hallelujah. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise to the congregation of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in his maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people and adorns the poor with victory. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them be joyful in their beds. Let them praise the God in your throat and a two-edged sword in their hands to wreak vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings in chains and their nobles with links of iron to inflict on them the judgment decree. This is the glory of all his faithful people. Hallelujah. The second reading. 
Ephesians 1, chapters 11 through 23. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him, you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption of God's own, or as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule in authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named not only in this age but also in the age to come and he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church which is his body the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what the ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The Gospel of the Lord. 
I speak to you in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed Feast of All Saints, and Happy Baptism Day. We gather here today in the company of angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, in the company of all the faithful departed, of the great cloud of witnesses described in Paul's letter to the Hebrews, and the blessed fellowship of the saints in light. Throughout this last week, starting with Halloween Eve, and then Halloween, and then All Saints, and All Souls, and all this week, we have remembered our loved ones who have died and gone before us to be with God. Later in the service, we will read their names, and in a few minutes, we will baptize a little one, Zen, marking him along with us as a Christian, as part of this centuries-old fellowship of faith and part of the body of Christ. And so it is in this context, on this feast, that we hear these words from Scripture, the holy ones of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever. He, Christ, has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body. And also, blessed are you who are poor, woe to you who are rich, do to others what you would have them do to you. Our readings today offer us three visions of the kingdom of God, the kingdom that we celebrate when we gather as Christians to worship and to have communion. In this first reading, which is from the prophet Daniel, who, by the way, would be the equivalent of like a horror, a science fiction writer at the time, writing genre fiction to warn you um, of what was complicated and difficult and unwieldy in the culture. So Daniel, um, I'm mortified that I'm forgetting the director of the movie, um, um, of all those horror movies. Anyway, never mind. I'm bad at horror movies. I retract my wondering statement. Anyway, Daniel, this author, he is writing to a people struggling to hold on to their faith and be a distinct people of God while living in exile. And he describes these holy ones who are set apart. This is the meaning of the word holy in Hebrew, set apart. These are the ones who will come to possess the kingdom. These holy people from this time period are people like Esther and Daniel and the three young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who are cast into the fire by the king and emerge unscathed. And their holiness comes from holding themselves apart from the world and practicing their faith and following God. Paul, only about three centuries later, is writing to the people in the city of Ephesus, which was one of the great centers of trade and culture in the ancient Near East, the equivalent of Oakland, with its port and its culture and its complications and its diversity. And that community is facing challenges about how to live faithfully as followers of this new and strange and very radical teacher, Jesus the Christ. The world around them, pagan Rome, calls them to place their trust and their hope in successful business ventures or political power, in having influence in owning property, in the false gods of money, and power. Paul calls this community instead to humility, to caring for one another and the vulnerable people who are part of them and who are around them. He calls them to unity in Christ, 
Christ, who is their Lord and their King, not Caesar or any earthly politician. Christ, who is their guide, not any guru or TikTok influencer. Christ, who came to love and to serve and to give his life away, who suffered and was humble. This Christ who leads them and guides them, this Christ who connects them and draws them into one body across time and space, Christ who draws us into that same body across time and space. So then we come to this reading in Luke, which doesn't really talk about saints. This is one of two teachings of Jesus known as the Beatitudes. And in Matthew, which is the gospel we're going to hear next year, this passage is part of the Sermon on the Mount. And it takes the form of a litany of blessings, eight of them. There's no woes, though. Luke, in contrast, puts this teaching early in Jesus' ministry and has Jesus deliver it in this wide open place. So it's called the Sermon on the Plain. And surrounding the disciples, are a great crowd of people who have come north from Jerusalem and south from the big cities on the coast of Lebanon. And this is his chance to tell them who he is and why they should follow him. And then he says, blessed are the poor, woe to you who are rich. Odd choice. But Paired blessings and woes, here at the heart of Jesus' message, comforting the afflicted and afflicting the comfortable. And so I ask you, are you comfortable this morning? Or is there maybe a little squirming? Why this passage on the feast of all saints? Well, we hear similar words, similar pairing of blessing and woe, Earlier in this church year, on the fourth Sunday of Advent, again from Luke, when we hear the Magnificat, Mary's song that she speaks out in response to the angel Gabriel coming to her and saying, God is going to be born in you. And she responds with rejoicing. She says, the mighty will be cast down from their thrones and the humble lifted up. The rich will be sent away empty, and the hungry will be filled with good things. Blessings and woes. And we know Jesus as the Son of God, but sometimes what is buried is how he was also the Son of Mary. We can imagine that she sang him this Magnificat, and that she and Joseph and his community told him the stories of his people, of the examples of Daniel and Esther that were within the generation's memory, all the way back to the prophets and Abraham, all the stories of freedom and faithfulness and coming through suffering and holding themselves apart and following God. We are here because someone gave us these stories and brought us into this tradition. Maybe it was parents and grandparents, maybe a friend or mentor. We stand in this tradition holding similar stories, the stories in the windows, the stories around our tables. This is why we gather, why we listen to the word and bring our children to church and pray together here and at home. Why we tell the stories of those who have gone before us to be with God. And this is why we baptize new members into Christ's body. Adults, like Jackson a few weeks ago, and little ones, like Zen, who we baptize today. Because it marks us as God's people, set apart, called to serve, called to follow Christ, called to live in that kingdom with the poor, serving the poor as the poor, 
with the lowly, serving the lowly as the lowly, and as God's children, blessed and blessing. This is the inheritance we have received that we remember today on the Feast of All Saints, the inheritance from our parents and grandparents, from the martyrs and the mystics and the teachers and the mothers, all of the people down through the centuries who sacrificed and were courageous, all the people who left St. Peter's in Redwood City 75 years ago and came to this place and raised the money to build these walls and bought the hymnals and prayer books that we're juggling today. All these people learned and struggled and served and sacrificed and taught their young ones. They loved God and failed to love God. They loved each other and they failed to love each other. And then they tried again, like we do. Surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses, remembered and s s floating off into the depths of memory, all the faithful and failing people who came before, all the way back to the first Episcopalians and the first Anglicans and the first Protestants and the first Christians, all the way back to Mary, telling Jesus, the Magnificat, to my parents singing Amazing Grace and Jesus Loves Me when I was a little girl. This is what we affirm when we recite the creed, what we offer when we come to the altar, what we receive when we hold our hands out for the bread and wine. The truth that we are God's, that we place our hearts and our trust and our faith and our hope, not in ourselves, not in the world, not in politics, not in money, not in anything made by human hands, but in God. That we follow Jesus in humility and transforming love, and we do so inviting others to join us along the way and who will do the work after we are gone. We do so as part of the great cloud of witnesses and as members of the body of Christ. Amen. Our service is going to continue on page 301 as we begin the baptismal rite. And I would like to invite the family and the sponsors, as well as all the young people who might want to come up and surround the baptismal font so that they can see better uh, what we are doing. So please. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. I present Zen to receive the sacrament of baptism. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will, with God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full status, stature of Christ? And now, do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. 
Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. And now, as a congregation, uh, let us recite together and renew our baptismal con covenant. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he was risen again. He descended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, Repent and return to the Lord. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? And now let us pray for Zen, who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Anna Marie, do you want to read that? Oh, sorry. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We thank you, almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son, Jesus, received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as Messiah the Christ to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into this fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing him in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit that those who are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever.
sin, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon then the forgiveness of sin and have raised him to new life of grace. Sustain him, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give him an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Zen, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in the baptism and marked as Christ's own forever and ever. We now welcome the newly baptized. See, I should asperge. Uh, yes. Okay. And for those of you who are here last time, when the bishop was here, this was one of his favorite parts. And what I'd like to do is I'd like the young people to do this, and I'll walk with them. So what you're going to do is you're going to hold this, and you're going to hold this, and you can hold this. And we're going to dip in the water, like that. And you dip in the water. And then we're going to go around and sprinkle everybody. <laughs> OK? <laughs> and here, some, put some more. Go ahead. Everybody in the back. Okay. Okay. Let's go back. Go ahead. Here you go. I got it. Well, thank you for helping. <laughs> the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. You can blow this up. Invite you to exchange a sign of peace with one another. <clears throat> thank you for your help. Peace be with you. Thank you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. That's yours, though. Good morning, everybody. Please be seated. It's been a great couple weeks having baptisms and confirmations. Uh, it shows the vitality of the congregation and all of you supporting the newly baptized, the newly received, the newly confirmed. And so thank you all for coming and supporting everybody. 
Do you have an announcement that you would like to make? Um, I, you will have noticed there is a voting center set up in the main body of the parish hall. So when we go in for coffee hour, you're going to go in and then to the um, left and then around to the right. But there is coffee hour, but it's in the, I believe the room is called the lounge, but it's close to the coffee machine, so it has everything we need. Um, for um, parents, there and families actually, um, this evening at St. Mark's Palo Alto, there is a potluck um, on faith and parenting, and details are in the parish email. Everyone is welcome. There is conversation around the challenges of parenting as a faithful person for the grown ups and also activities for teens and kids. And um, seekers, I'm going to be away um, starting on Wednesday, so seekers is having a hiatus next Sunday, and we'll be back together on the 20th. Um, Seekers is our youth group, and I think that's, oh, and storage. Yes. So if HD, if you would come up, I believe you have a word for us. We are in the stewardship season, and Leanne last week uh, gave a nice introduction, so thank you for that. Um, I do want to take a moment to thank Anna Marie for helping me put together the stewardship package. Alas, we don't have the computer skills that Lisa had, so you have more of an abbreviated package this year. But anyway, I just wanted to thank Anna Marie for all the help she gave putting it together. Good morning, and I wanted to thank you, first of all, for an opportunity to do something that's hard for me, asking. And I wanted to reflect on what this congregation and what this community is all about. And many of you know I have the opportunity to be the, um, to to co-lead the search committee for our next rector. And as we did our intro last week, or week before last, I guess it was, um, the things that we were talking about were a lot about family and community and how we support one another and our kids and how our kids support one another. I'm going to pull on a little thread that Anne Marie was talking about in her sermon today and a little story about my daughter who felt very moved to come back. Uh, She's living in Boston now. I felt to come back for our annual retreat at Bishop's Ranch because she wanted to see her friends, her family, her community. And I also had the uh, experience last week where she's now taking this into her world with her Halloween party and her community that she's now established in Boston. And to me, that's kind of the multi-generational values around um, community and fellowship and supporting one another as we go through hard times. I'll tell another story that was uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact. A friend of mine's had some, uh, some medical challenges. Um, and uh, he and I have spent some time over the last little bit encouraging each other in our exercise and our eating habits really trying to uh, work through that. We took uh, a moment out yesterday, a day out yesterday, and, uh, and uh, went up to Healdsburg. We had some great food, some great wine, met up with another uh, former member from, from this community who uh, also reflected on how she felt separated. And I was like, well, we have technology for that now. So I hope that those folks now will come back together. We got done with the day yesterday, and um, he shared with me that this was really important to him as he kind of broke out of the uh, rut that we've all gotten in with the uh, the pandemic and everything and that how that really helped him and as I was reflecting on that this morning um, that's really the the role of supporting one another and I was uh, moved in the uh, baptismal covenant how do we continue in the apostles teaching and fellowship and so to me, those, those things are all related. They're all twisted together. So now coming back to the practical aspects of this, how do we express and demonstrate these values for our kids and for our, our, our friends? And it's the, the typical thing. It's where do we spend our time? How do we participate? What do we choose to do? I've recently joined the choir. Uh, that means a lot to me. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Also in talent, sharing our gifts, um, whether that's Uh, decorating the church for uh, Christmas, which is coming up here, or uh, working with the teens on a craft project, for example. And then finally, our funding, our our treasure. 
How do we support the church and the earthly things that it has to do? So kind of coming back to that, pulling on that thread a little bit, you know, I reflected on the fact that the vast majority of our budget in this church goes to pay our staff their salaries and their benefits. It's pretty much exclusively. There's a very little bit that's not that. <clears throat> so with that in mind, I, I would like to urge everyone to, to look deep into their crystal ball and in their hearts and think about how you can do, how you can do a little, because if everybody does a little, no one has to do a lot. And I, I know I received my packet uh, yesterday, and so we'll be filling that over, uh, out over the next week or so, and I would encourage everyone to do the same. Thank you. Just a comment about the stewardship mailing. Um, Lisa left us much information and lists, and we have been navigating that and producing what was mailed out. Um, there's another group um, that are going to get mailed out um, early this week. Um, if you have not received a packet by next Sunday, please do speak up. Um, and then Bob also just has a comment about data and things. Yeah, one of the things, one of the things we're trying to do is make sure that we respectfully reach out to the various members who come to the church. So if you get questions from us, it's because we're trying to rebuild the database of giving and, and making sure that we contact those who would like to be contacted and respectfully leave those who wish not to be contacted alone. So anyway, so if you get questions from us, it's like I said, we're just trying to make sure that we meet everybody where they are. And so thank you for your patience. Um, one thing that I would like to do, um, Anna Marie mentioned that we have an, uh, the election officials next door um, in our parish hall. And I think it's appropriate, as we did last week, for this week to again pray for the election. Um, and so if you turn to, um, let me see, I had it. Um, to page 822 in the red prayer book, let us read together the prayer for an election. Almighty God, to whom we must account for all our powers and privileges, guide the people of the United States in the election of officials and representatives that by faithful administration and wise laws the rights of all may be protected and our nation be enabled to fulfill your purposes through Jesus Christ our Lord. There is one more announcement before we do the birthdays and anniversaries. Angela. Good morning. Uh, next Sunday during coffee hour after church, I'll be giving a presentation, a short 15 minute presentation about um, low waste Christmas gift ideas. So getting rid of plastic and other things that are headed for the landfill. Um, so that's after church next Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to do this next or do the birthdays next? Birthdays. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries that you would like this congregation's prayers? Birthday? Yes. Excellent. Let's turn to page 830 in the prayer book and let us recite prayer number 51 together. Birthday also? My wife's birthday. Your wife's birthday. Okay. And her name is? Diem. Diem. Watch over your children, O oh Lord as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. And may your wife be blessed this day and always. And now, as is our custom, um, 
we would like to recite all the names that we recited together on when, at Wednesday Chapel when we did the Feast of All Souls. All those who are with us as we come to the altar of God. Nancy Allison, Ronald Allison, Pat Armstrong, aunts, uncles, and grandparents, Beverly Bartolini, Judy Bellick, Diane Beerwagon, Oliver Bigadike, Ralph Bigadike, Dick Bonino, Judy Brown. Marianne Church, Susan Conover, Dominic De Rossi, Samantha Disharoon, Percy the guinea pig. Bill Gates, Virginia Gertelman, Max Granfield, Mabel Guillory, Gabriel Guillory. Louise Gaminsky, Roman Gaminsky, Marjean Hardigan, Licky Hayashida, Sueo Hayashida. Dorothy Heberer, Miles Heberer, Bernice Holubar, Ted She, Doyle Johnson. Marion Johnson, Warren Jones, Carol Kostler, Mabel Kostler, Robert Kostler. Tova LeCoyer, Alice Marquis, Judy Marquis, Philip McKenty, Meredith McKittrick, Frank Meyer. Jerry O'Haver, Linda Pebbett, Connie Porrero, Nina Pohl, John Price. D. Prince, Arvo Ray, Gertrude Ray, Michael Rech, Dan Reed. Gary Rug, Agnes Ryan, John Ryan, Mary Sakamoto, Jim Schuler. Louise Shaw, Eldris Shogren, Pam Smith, Patricia Smith, Tom Smith. Tom Smith, Neil Takeuchi, Gil Tovar, Catherine Trulick, the Reverend Canon Dick Wagner. Bob and Pat Winningham, Bill Zimmerman, John and Jeanette Zwengel, Joyce and Wanda. May, may they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and gift to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. For in the multitude of your saints you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses that we might rejoice in their fellowship and run with endurance the race that is set before us and together with them receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Pardon me. Therefore, jo therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn, proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error and the truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O God, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, and we wait his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in communion with your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. All are welcome at God's table. I invite you to come up um, for the Eucharist. We'll come down the steps. Um, just be aware that today is a little bit more of an obstacle course than usual. Uh, with the baptismal font uh, right in the middle. So um, we'll try to make sure that um, we work it so that you can get around it. We also have gluten-free wafers if you need to receive gluten-free. Um, please leave your masks on as you come forward. Take the bread and the tiny cup of wine. And then when you're done with the elements, um, there are trays for the cups on either side of the church, and the cups will be composted.
Let us turn to page 366 in the Book of Common Prayer and recite together our post-communion prayer, page 366. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us the spiritual food of his most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries of living members, the body of your Son, and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. May the blessing of the God of Abraham and Sarah and of Jesus Christ, born of our sister Mary, and of the Holy Spirit who broods over the world as a mother over her children, be upon you and remain with you always. The Lord be with you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia.